All right then, so in the last tutorial, we saw the props of the component output twice to the console over here, right? Let me just zoom in so we can see. And we saw that the second time around, the books were attached to this data property inside the props. So what happens with React is that when some kind of data or the props or something to do with the component updates, then React re-renders the component, right? So then we can match the component with the data. So when we receive the data here, the books on the props, we can use that data to output it to the screen over here. So when it re-renders, the books are gonna be listed here. Make sense? Okay, cool. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So let's head over to the code. I'm inside the book list component here. And what I'd like to do is first of all, get rid of this console.log inside the render function. I'd like to create another function which is gonna control the output of the book data to the screen in the component, all right? So let's create that uh, function right here. We'll call the function display books. That makes sense. All right, so inside this function, what do we want to do? Well, first of all, let's create a variable called data and set that equal to this dot props dot data, right? Remember, when we output this to the console, it's all attached to a data property on the props. That's what GraphQL does. It attaches it to the data property right here, all right? Notice also that the first time around, this loading property right here is true. That means that the query is still loading in the background. It's not returned to us yet. We don't have that data yet. Whereas down here, the second time it's logged out, loading is false. So obviously we have data at that point. It's no longer loading and we do right here. We have the array of books. So what we could do is use this property loading to check if the data is actually ready for us yet, right? And if it is ready, then we'll output the books. If it's not ready, then we'll output something else like loading books or something like that. So let's head to the code again. And underneath here, let's do that little check. We'll say if data.loading, remember that's the loading property. So this.props.data.loading. If that is true, then what do we want to do? Well, we can't output the books yet. So let's just output something else like a uh, loading books. So we'll return something here and it's just gonna be a div tag. And this div tag is gonna say something like loading books, like so. All right, let's close that div tag. So that's what we're gonna do in this case. Now then, if this is false, then we're gonna run the else statement. And that means if loading is false that we have the data, right? So now what we can do is take that data, take the books and we can map them to some HTML and output them. So what we'll do in this case is return again, and we'll return data dot books because now we have access to the books property on the data. Remember data dot books here. So that is an array. So therefore we can map that array to some HTML. So what map does is go through that array and give us access to the individual item each time around, which I'm gonna call book. So this is gonna be an arrow function. So we're taking that book and firing a function each time around, okay? And each time around, each iteration through that array for each item will return some HTML. So return, and then in parenthesis, we'll do an li tag. And inside the li tag, we'll do book.name, all right? So let's spell it correctly, book.name. Let me just explain this briefly again once I'm done here. If loading is true, then we're just gonna show this loading books. If loading is false, we'll fire this and we're returning data.books.map, which is cycling through that array and each iteration through when it lands on each item in the array, we're taking that book and we're using it inside this ES6 function right here, which each time around is returning some HTML and it's taking that, uh, that book and grabbing the name property off it and placing it inside the li tag right here. Remember, the curly braces is how we output data dynamically in React. Now, let's give this a whirl. There's something missing, but I'm gonna come back to that in a second. In fact, what we need to do is call this function, otherwise nothing will happen. So down here, instead of this li, what we need to do is open our curly braces and inside the curly braces, call the function. So we say this, dot display books, all right? 
So this refers to the component, then dot display books, which is the method inside this component. It's going to run this and either show us this or this stuff. So let's save it and find out what happens. Let's go to the browser and you can see right here that we have all of the books on the screen. Now, if we refresh this, if you're really quick, you might see the loading bit at the start. So refresh loading books very quickly it goes once the query comes back with the data and then we have this stuff output to the browser that is awesome now i said there was one thing left to do and it's because we have this error right here which basically says each child in an array or iterator should have a unique key prop so if we go to the code right here it's saying that each one of these li tags that we're outputting has to have some kind of key some kind of identifier for each li tag so react knows exactly what it is if you like all right so we can say that the key is going to be equal to the book dot id right and that's going to be unique for each different li tag because in the query up here we say we want the name of each book and the id of each book so we're outputting the name within the li tag and the ID of the book as the key. And that will be different for each different LI tag that we iterate through. So let's save this and make sure that the uh, the error goes away. If we refresh, we can see loading, then this flashes up and the error is gone. So awesome, well done. That is how we can bind our query with the component and then have access to all of the data that comes back from that query and output it to the screen. So we're getting closer and closer to the final product here. We're starting to interact with our GraphQL server. And in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is start to create different components to add data to this list. So I'll see you in that next tutorial.